If you've traveled extensively in the north of India, today's recipe needs no introduction. It's one of the most brilliant combinations of a samosa and a kadhi. The recipe name you may ask, kadhi samosa. For the samosa recipe, generally what we do is we create a tempering. I'm of course going to create a tempering, but I'm going to mix all of this using a mixy jar, create like a little bit of a masala, and then saute that in pan fry. Let's see how. Seeds of fennel, peeled ginger, diced roughly, cumin seeds, untoasted, and green chilies. Now, in this recipe, personally, I don't like the samosas too spicy. So I've used a combination of chilies, which are less on spice, which are more now, and one chili, which is spicy. But the choice of spice is completely yours. The next step is to grind this roughly. Let's do that. Your spice mix for the samosa is done and ready. And like I said, it needs to be roughly crushed. Let's have a quick check. Just perfect. Let's begin. What we are now making is the filling or the stuffing of the samosa. Beginning with desi ghee, just a few drops of cooking oil. Allow this to heat and to that we're going to add in this crushed mixture. This whole mixture needs to be fried for 30 seconds on medium flame. Once this becomes nice and fragrant, time to add in a touch of red chilli powder, well not too much. And along with this, garam masala powder. Stir this well. And at this stage, you can actually turn the flame off. You know why? Because the samosa mixture is done and ready. And ensure that the raw flavor of this masala goes away. Also ensuring that this does not burn. At this stage, off goes the flame. Yes, you heard that right. Off goes the flame because the cooking part of this mixture is done. Let's add in coriander leaves, followed by mint leaves. Green peas that are boiled and kept ready. And finally, potatoes that are boiled, peeled, mashed and kept ready. Salt as required. The next step is to bring all of this together and mixing this well. With this, a potato stuffing is done and ready for the samosa. The next step is to make the samosa, rather shape the samosas. Let's do that. Now for this, what I've done is, I've already made the dough of refined flour, which is all-purpose flour. With that, I've added in a touch of salt, a little bit of oil, water, and made a stiff dough. To flavor this, I also like adding in cumin seeds, and some like adding in carom seeds. Choice is yours. Let's knead this once again. And we roll this into a cylinder, and let's cut lemon-sized balls. Let's reserve all this extra dough in a bowl and concentrate on this one little ball of dough. And we need to roll this like a chapati. Now this is the time when you actually need to decide the size of the samosa. If you're looking at a small or a cocktail size samosa, then of course, go for a tinier ball of dough. If you're looking at a regular size samosa, you need to look at literally an orange sized ball of dough. You need not bother about the shape of this disc at this stage because eventually we're going to cut this into a half moon. You need to lift this and place it on your palm. Dip your fingers in water. Just spread it on the entire surface. Lift this like so in your other palm and then you need to paste it. This is how you need to create like a conical shape or a cone shape, like so, as taking this mixture and filling it, like so. The next step is to pinch this side, like so, halfway through, then take this and overlap it on the first fold and pinch this. That's how your samosa starts looking like a samosa. Similarly, let's make some more. Our samosas are shaped and ready. The next step is to fry these. Now there's one tip here for all of you, especially while frying samosas, we do not need oil, which is screaming for tension. You need oil, which is just kind of begun to heat. And that's the temperature where we drop in these samosas. Once you see these little bubbles around the samosa, it means this is perfectly hot. 
slightly jiggle the kadai like so and that's about it at no point in time at the beginning are you going to use a slotted spoon because the moment you touch this to the samosa it'll either start breaking or start getting damaged and we do not want that to happen just forget it for like a minute or so and after that we're going to just lightly touch it without damaging remember that the whole idea is to fry the samosa in low heat for a longer time because the outside is almost like a short crust pastry almost biscuity and that texture will only come in when you fry this at a lower temperature if the flame is high what would happen the samosa would get that wonderful color on the outside and remain raw within now you would ask raw within isn't the stuffing already cooked when i say raw within it means the pastry shell or the samosa shell will get colored on the outside and stay raw inside remember that low flame a longer amount of time it could take 10 minutes it could take 12 minutes depending on the oil remember this while that's getting cooked let's quickly start making the kadhi because remember the recipe kadhi samosa let's turn the flame on and into this i'm going to add in cooking oil once the oil heats up i'm going to begin with mustard seeds when they begin to crackle i'm going to throw in some fresh green chilies along with this lots of curry leaves add in water immediately to ensure that the tempering now is in complete control while this is now in control do not forget that the samosas are getting deep fried stir these with very light hands like so and once these get that desired golden brown color we'll remove these as well let the samosas fry let's quickly move on to the kadhi which is here now getting cooked for this i've taken curd to which i'm adding in untoasted gram flour well this kadhi is not like your usual kadhi that you make uh, in either a gujarati home or a punjabi home this is very different and by now you would have realized that the ingredients are roughly the same but it's still a different kadhi it um, the tempering is different if you see it's not like adding in a mixture of dahi and uh, gram flour we actually whisking it separately now if you've noticed we've added water to the tempering and ensure that all the flavor from the chili from the mustard from the curry leaf is now part of this water let's whisk this once this curd and gram mixture becomes nice and smooth like so i'm going to add in turmeric powder and mix this well now that the curd and gram flour mixture is done and ready knock the spoon off and with the help of a whisk i'm going to add this mixture into this water and whisk it water well this kadhi is generally lighter or thinner than your usual kadhi so remember that but in case you want to make it thicker almost like a chutney which is also one of the many ways in which uh, this kadhi is served in some cities by all means do that when i say a chutney i mean the gram flour chutney or the besan chutney where lesser water goes in that and this almost becomes like a thick mass almost like a chutney so remember that i'm going to add in sugar and finally to this actually not finally because there's one ingredient which is still left and which in a lot of ways is the star of this recipe so that's salt and finally now i'm going to add in asafoetida water which in india is hinka pani because this kadhi is primarily predominantly flavored with hinka pani so now if you remember what i told you earlier this is not like one of those usual gujarati or uh, punjabi kadhis it's the same yet different mix this well and finally now goes in hinka pani one quick stir you need to check the seasoning and your kadhi is done and ready what's now left is the combination of samosa and kadhi let's clear all of this and get cracking with this off goes the flame because your kadhi as well is done and ready the next step is taking the kadhi taking the samosa and assembling this let's see how all you need to do is take the samosa and of course 
break it like so or crush this place it like so as random as random can get the next step is taking this thin kadi almost like a wonderful yogurty broth and pouring it like so topping this up with freshly chopped onions a green chili for the adventurous ones and finally some nice flavorful rogan if you do not want to assemble all of this together what you can do is serve kadhi and samosa separately like so with this your kadhi samosa is done and ready now i have added rogan to this recipe which is nothing but flavored chili oil you can go all out and add in some fresh curd you can add in some salt ki chutney which is your sweet tamarind chutney or you can also lay in some mint and coriander chutney the choice is completely yours what's important is to have this combination together the samosa fans and the kadhi fans this recipe is now all yours bye for now